Hi, everybody. It's meteorologist Joe Chaffee. I wanted to wait for enough of the GFS model to come in around midday uh, and uh, before I cut a video this morning, and we can look back at the European from last night. But here's something that uh, was very interesting today because uh, while most of the models, uh, in fact, all the ones I saw except for the NAM, had the heaviest precip from the coast and east, the reality has been that uh, the heaviest precip has been from western Long Island, west and north, in northern New Jersey and in the parts of the Hudson Valley. And this is actually great news because this is part of the area that has had a severe drought. So uh, they've already picked up anywhere between a half an inch to uh, an inch, isolated amounts to an inch and a half. And it's still raining um, based on uh, the latest radar views that we have. And I'll, I'll uh, put it in motion here for you so you can take a look. But, uh, it's lifting northward. The back edge is out in the ocean. Long Island getting some good rains now, too, coming in from the south. Um, we've even seen some lightning and thunder out of this. So I think this is going to work out quite well. It'll certainly um, a bonus. And actually, I want to also have it as food for thought going forward because you try and, 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 and see model errors and see which ones work better. The European actually had a better idea with a surface flow much closer to the coast where the GFS was way out to the east. So that's going to be something that I want to you know, think about uh, when we uh, look at the, uh, the future. Now, I want to take a look at the new GFS run as we uh, head out into the rest of this week. And what's happening is this first system, you can see this upper air feature is cutting off uh, along the mid-Atlantic coast. And this is going to be a very important feature with regards to the next weather system that's coming out of the plains. And, and, and you can... Um, you can see how they're lining up. Now, you know, I, I want to also make clear in terms of the phrase pattern change, I, I, I have said this a few times. I'm going to say it again. The pattern change you want may not necessarily be the pattern change you get. I would argue that the pattern has already changed uh, because we are now beginning to see weather systems moving across in the jet stream out of the Pacific. Uh, even though it has yet to turn colder. I think that part of the equation still has some work to do, uh, but uh, we may, we will eventually, I think, get there. And it might only take us down to near normal when this is all said and done. So, you know, we're not talking Arctic cold here. It may just be the temperatures come down to normal or a little bit below, and that's the way it's going to be. But um, anyway, here comes the next weather system. Now, I said the last y yesterday, what the key is going to be with this is you've got this ocean system that's sitting out here, and that is going to be really the driver of this next thing. Because if this is, a l is stronger and takes a little longer to get out of the way, this is going to force that energy to be further south. Now, what the uh, GFS is doing, and uh, it's doing it because it is not as deep with this lead system it allows this next weather system to do what it naturally would like to do which is turn northeastward into eastern canada uh, it still becomes a, a cold core cyclone but it lifts up to the west and north so that would limit precipitation uh, as far as um, coastal areas down to new york city and new jersey are concerned however uh, i want to look at last night's european model which has a slightly different view of this and if you look here, and I'm going to switch back, this is the European, and here is the new GFS for the same time frame. And you can see the difference from last night. The European has a much deeper system here uh, in the southern stream. Uh, you can see it right here. It's much further south, and uh, you have this other short wave that's kind of coming around in Canada. Here's that ocean low, which is a little bit better defined, and you've got the big ridge that's building northward into the Canadian Maritime provinces. So, um, you know, this is going to be um, somewhat critical uh, because if, you know, you wind up taking an upper low that's further south, uh, you're probably going to wind up with some decent snows in the interior areas of the northeast, including um, lake effect areas. I think they're going to get some either way. The European just provides a more robust solution through all of this. Now, we're not going to have the entire run, but we do see what the model has been telegraphing, this kind of blocky look to it where you've got this ridge that's building up 
uh, over in, in from the Atlantic up into Greenland. You've got this little vortex that's over here in the eastern in, in, in southeastern Canada, and you continue to start to see these weather systems that are plowing along in the Pacific jet and coming inland. And that's going to have implications, by the way, for areas away from the East Coast, which I want to take a look at because I know a lot of you are in different parts of the country, and I can appreciate the fact that you want to see your area too. And I, and I'm going to really make a cognizant, you know, really make an effort um, to try and pay, you know, give you a broad, a, a bit of a broad brush view here of what's happening. So uh, we're going to be dry here in the east for the rest of the week. You can see, by the way, in the uh, actually going to get some snow up in parts of the northern Colorado into Wyoming and northwest Nebraska and, and South Dakota, eventually moving up into Minnesota. Now, this will be their first snowfalls of the season as low pressure heads to the western lakes. Uh, the east is dry. We have a pretty uh, robust weather system coming into the Pacific Northwest. And then notice as we move into Sunday, we start to get some lake effect snows in the Great Lakes and over parts of upstate New York, and that, that kind of expands here. Now, with a surface low going where the, the GFS has it, this would make total sense. I think the lake mach effect machine will be turned on, and this shot of air is actually fairly cold. So it was a pretty decent shot of air coming down for this weekend and into early next week. Uh, out in the west, uh, we've got this next weather system that's coming into the Pacific Northwest, so we'll have to see um, what, what models do going forward with that. I'll, I'll go back to the overnight run just real quick just to show you. Uh, already you can see a difference that this particular run is actually deeper with what's coming in to the West Coast for the same time frame. So um, that's going to be a, uh, a, a, a positive perhaps uh, with respect to getting a system strong enough to produce uh, ample precipitation. I'll widen out. And, you know, for those of you in southeastern Canada and the Canadian Maritimes, you're probably going to get some rain um, out of this uh, low because of how it's tracking on the uh, weather models here. It, it goes actually west of you, so you're going to have warm air that's going to come into Newfoundland and to Labrador. And you can see the energy in the Pacific just continuing to line up. Uh, you'll see it better uh, when we look at the upper air map, and I'll, I'll uh, put that up again for you. And uh, let's I can highlight it here just a little bit. So you have uh, here's your one system here. You got another one here. You got another one here. So it's kind of like a train. And now we're just going to wait to see what the model does long term in terms of um, the overall blocking pattern because it was in very very blocky looking um, going forward, and all the indicators from the overnight continue to point in that direction. So we are seeing a pattern change. It is underway. Where we wind up with this, I don't know. Um, don't assume, by the way, that just because we're going to be going into a situation where we have blocking and cold air available, that that necessarily means that a, a snowstorm is imminent. It just doesn't work that way. You could have all these indicators telling you that, um, you know, things are favorable for something like that to happen. But if these troughs don't line up in the right place, if the ridges are not strong enough, um, then you could be sitting here and just being cooler than normal and basically dry uh, through the forecast period. So, uh, you know, you have to take these things really with um, huge grains of salt uh, in terms of the overall trend. And I'll leave you with this as we uh, move through, uh, just show you in terms of above normal and below normal, uh, going through the rest of this week, you can see that area of above normal in the middle of the country. The east is kind of close to normal or a little bit above. Uh, and then you start to get into the below normal temperatures this weekend. And then we move into Thanksgiving week. I only have through Tuesday, but you can see a large part of the eastern half of the United States is below normal. And also notice the shrinking areas of above normal going on uh, in Canada, telling us that you know there's colder air coming into the picture. And all of this you know, this cold air displacement, the way it looks, uh, is being caused by the developing blocking pattern. And, and you can see across the northern regions, particularly along the poles, this large area of above normal temperatures that just continues uh, there. And that is the driver for displacing cold air southward. So we'll take a look at what the afternoon models do. We'll look for a post on meteorologist JoeChaffee.com, uh, WeatherLongIsland.com, Angry Ben. Angry Ben's weather, and you'll see him popping up soon from time to time. Uh, he's got uh, nycweathernow.com, so you might want to check that out and check him out on Facebook. And don't forget SS Storm Chasers, 
because when these snowstorms do start happening, they're going to be chasing them.